database. Chris, are you there? If you can just, if, if you can just define in a fewest words, what is a database? Or anyone maybe other than Chris. Uh, there are lots of lots of people who are left style. So, a storehouse for information. Yes, that's that's very good. That's very good. And uh, uh, and 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 maybe Lucky ha Lucky has provided storage of data. Yes, Lucky, thank you. And uh, and uh, I'm I'm also looking for some other definitions from someone. Maybe like Luca. Luca, your definition is missing. Kevin, thank you very much. Allocated data. Okay. Organized pile of data. Yes, some some difference of word, but again, the concept is correct. All right. So when we say a database, we are just talking about the you know related information or the like a, the 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 collection of the data, or maybe you know interrelated collection of the data. And the 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 real thing is that the real misconception here is few people like like not your not you people. But there were a few people who, who just think about database and they, they have quickly come there. They, they have that access, Microsoft access come in their mind. And they have, you know, maybe MySQL or SQL, SQL, whatever, they come in their mind. And sometimes people say, now they are talking about MongoDB, what they or other. Now they are talking about the things like that. So generally people say, so we know that they are not databases, rather they are database management tools or management systems and again what i what i want you to from like why i have asked this question uh, that everyone should know the difference between the database and dbms so we'll we'll discuss about dbms more but what i want to want you to know is the difference between the database and the database management system so people when they say that uh, for example they say mysql so they're talking about a dbms that a, a management system for database if they talk about if they talk about microsoft access they are specifically talking about a database management system so we'll talk about that that as well so a database is yes as you people said a collection of uh, like in, interrelated information or so database organized collection of logically related data so that data is specifically what logically connected or logically related to each other so data is stored representation that data stored representations of meaningful objects and events so our data is basically meaningful objects and events which which can be stored somewhere so can can anyone give a quick example of data for for us right now can anyone give a quick example maybe after lucas age j says age if we collect age of everyone even though uh, j would not like to tell his age to everyone <laughs> maybe so yes lucas says address address can be collected uh, student number grades anything yes phone number customer orders asad says customer order that's very good really says um, um, id and then birthday banking yes so that can be that can be there can be a lots of lots of data if we talk about if you talk about this classroom we may say that the first name of everyone you know and uh, sound data as you said the password the purchase history the card numbers the object to storing attribute so again uh, there can be a so stored representation of meaningful objects. So meaningful objects, as someone said, age. Someone first said age. So age is, is basically the flight name, flight time, the sound data. So all these basically play what they, they are the stored representation of meaningful objects and events. It can be like they can be in, in different forms. They can be structured in numbers, text, dates form, structured one, and there we can just you know we can just uh, typically say them. We can we can sort them and we can we can have some relationship implemented to them, or they can be unstructured. That like images, videos, and documents. That generally we say that they are they are not they are sort of yeah, like unstructured form of of our of our data. So again, uh, it can be in both of the forms. The first form is a structured form. The second form is unstructured or image, video, or documents. Okay, here is a here is a small idea which is not the idea anymore, but it's a very good thing to uh, like uh, thing to ponder and thing to remember. And I want all of you to have that that try to convert these images that these videos and documents and you know a lots of research have been done on that and people are doing a lots of things on them but try you try to convert these images and these videos and documents and google is doing a lots of things into the into the uh, numeric form or into the form that is meaningful and the, into the form that is that is as good to be worked on as our structured data so again there are project ideas and there are a number of things so ser searching something from a video, like a contextual based searching from a video that uh, take out all those video where, where someone has a, has a brown cap on their head, maybe for example, something like that, and which Google is, is very much doing these days. But again, 
so here is here is here are some project ideas as well that you should keep in mind that we can have uh, like uh, transcribing the videos and then then ma making a complete database of it and then making it easy for people to find out according to the word what are the different videos where conistoga was said maybe more than 1000 times just take out those videos what are the, those etc etc so there will be a lots of things so information and you know data information they always go side side to side so information data process to increase knowledge in the person using the data so again you know uh, the old slow you know the the old book definition what was that definition the the processed data is becomes information the processed data is the information and now again as we we're saying that age if we collect age of all these 72 73 people right now present or maybe all those 80s present uh, like in, in named in the class so if we collect all of their ages that would be a data and i say that how many are uh, you know younger than maybe 19 years so if that data if you are collecting so then you will say that this becomes an information that has some some positive or some relationship in it or some processing has been done on that or maybe you collect the first name of everyone and then you say that how many are starting with n so then you will find out that yes there are out of these 80 these 13 people have their first name starting with n so you'll say that this has become information i hope everyone understands that and then metadata everyone that everyone knows data that describes the properties and context of the user data i hope everyone knows that and i'll just add one quick definition what i want all of you is to just keep, remember one thing it's what if i write a definition of this what should i write can anyone give me a oh okay so someone is asking a private question uh, should i should i repeat this question for, in front of everyone uh, someone who is privately asked a question. Okay, thank you. So uh, this is the so, so not that everything that is in a database is actually information. So just keep in mind uh, here what we are saying is that we have said that collection of everything, collection of or like related data is called a database or a, it's a data and then original organized collection of logically related data is the database. And someone is asking that it means that database, whatever database can contains is not all the basically all actually information can anyone else would like like uh, does anyone else want to answer this question i hope i'm just repeating that question because it was privately asked S someone said that everything that is in a database is not information so that means so can anyone answer this character the data and usage can we say underlying descriptions for actual data okay right okay that's good that's good but why are you uh, someone is privately asking. So again, uh, my question is, is a bit a bit different. Yes, you you people are replying to this uh, metadata definition. You are right. So what I what I, I'll I'll come back to your question. Someone has privately asked a question, so I'll come to your question and I'll I'll discuss about that. So first, let me complete that. Data about data. I just remember it it's something like this. Underline description of private actual data. You are right. But again, uh, now you should just keep in mind data about data. So something that is represent representing or or describing the data into the context. For example, something is there and we'll see the example shortly. So data about data is the metadata, information is the process. Now I'm again coming back to the question. And uh, sh as I have just taken permission, so I'm just copying that question here. I'm copying someone's question in chat window. So their question was, so not everything that is in a database is, uh, is actually information. What do you say, uh, Nick, uh, I'll come to your point as well. I've not studied that point as well still. So I'm just asking this question. First of all, if you can reply to this question. So not everything that is in a database is actually information. Someone is asking. What do you say? Yes, Jake, your example is good. Nick, it's like a pic time of picture. Uh, yes, yes. Nick, thank, thank you very much. You are right. But again, what is the answer of this question? I'm, I'm asking this question. So not everything that's in a database is actually information. Oh, that's good. Okay, Jake says they are correct. Not all data in a database is a meaningful data. Anyone else? I would like to have. Uh... All right. So Chris, Chris says no information is what you get out of manipulating the data. So Chris, you you mean you are you are like you are in the favor of this fact that there the all the all something in database is not information. Chris, you are in that favor, right? Uh, yes okay chris yes 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 right so that's that's the answer i hope you get the answer to whosoever was asking but again let me let me just uh, add to that and people have, are giving very good answers like uh, joel has given some answers and and please forgive me because if i because there's so you know lots of information so you you just 
the no information is what you get out of manipulate chris said yes data should be processed to be yes you are right jay so again we are saying database so it contains all that data and you process that out and get your meaningful information so meaning it's the information is being extracted from your data yes yes tommy you, uh, someone is right uh, privately that isn't the information the specific thing you take from the data yes information is specific thing that you take out of that so there was a as as i said you that i have collected all the first name of all this class and then i say that tell me for example uh, for, for example if i ask chris chris how many of students are starting with c their first name is starting with c so chris will come up with maybe five names and say that so i'll say that this is information but this information has come from the database because database had that all those record saved in inside that and he has just taken that up so again yes uh, so i i hope uh, yes so you got the answer all right so um, these were these were few definitions organized collection stored representation data processed and then data about data so this have these these are few things that we have to keep in mind and we'll be just building upon building upon those definitions right so uh, if you if you just go to the book you will find out that before this picture they have given this data into a typical simple table form without any without any information without any headers or something and they said that this is data so you know there he can, you can find a class class roster here course is mgt 500 business policy semester for spring 2015 semester section 2 name this one id this one major is this one and gpa is this one and something like that so we have we have got this uh, this contact so now this data is basically in a class roster form and we can understand the relationship between these these data everything that we know that for example this baker he was in semester spring 2015 enrolled in business business policy mgt 500 course and this was a section number 2 so again a context a class roster context or this course and this information is adding some important uh, important information about it and as people have answered about the metadata or data about data as well that uh, this these information is making it more useful so if you place some data in a context if i again if i just take out these everything out of here for example if i say that i'm just taking out i just give you these name this id this mgt so rather you will be able to find okay this baker has some maybe this is his this is their id and mgt so again now what we'll say that this this class doctor so someone is asking a question so can we say that name id gpa as uh, metadata so again uh, anyone uh, someone is asking privately that what what will be specifically what can be called as a as a metadata for this particular information this 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 particular this particular table so what do you people say that what what can be called as a metadata for these particular things that that we can associate with it uh, i'm just uh, asking uh, like copying this question with uh, your permission maybe so so can we say name id gpa as name id major and gpa nothing displayed here the metadata would be something like when the data was entered all right okay So Chris says that it's that there is nothing that can be said. Could matter who entered the student's information or when it was entered. Yes, Ian, you're right. You're right. And Asad says MGT 500 average GPA could be a metadata. I think. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Anyone else? Yes. So average GPA could be a met could be metadata. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Josh says. anyone else and i need one or two more concepts license and copyright all right so fun thing best things first like uh, according to like one or two comments that have come i don't know who who said that first of all what this data like uh, when this data was entered when this table was created when this thing so they will be called as the information or the data about this data which is over, of course uh, which is which is here right so basically what we are saying that if you if you say that uh, if you're talking about average gpa so average gpa so every gpa means you are just taking all of the average of this so will that become the metadata anyone else because someone is agreeing with j and j was saying the average gpa could gpa could be a metadata anyone else yes so nick as nick said you know as as i was saying okay as i say okay right so now please listen about it uh the last time it was updated who updated it and who wrote it what file type it is why it was saved is is the metadata so again it is the information that tells about this table or this info this information that what what happened to it who did what on that who did what on on that particular item so again 
so metadata would be specifically and and here in that case in that case because it's all table related to this and this this in that case we'll say that uh, those information which will tell us that how and why this table was created when it was updated who just uh, entered all these records and who was just taking out this record so this can be one one metadata over here so again there 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 can be contextually differences between the metadata and your or your different different data types so we'll see that shortly we'll, uh, we'll when we'll come to the next slides look at here now this was the data but again this data was on in a tabular form now if that data is basically is converted into charts and graphs the graphical displays turn data into useful information that managers can use for a decision making and interpretation so you know that when you talk about the managerial level and you want to show them what is going on uh, you you try to put that that information into this summarized data form and in these graphs and charts form and you basically do what that the higher managers or maybe the people who have to take decisions according to this data will will be will be will be more comfortable with this type of data rather than this type of data because here we'll have to just go and find out what is this m how many how many are major measuring mgt over here how many are measuring in m marketing or is or etc but again here in a very quick look in this in this pie chart maybe you can see that marketing is 15% fin is 100% finance and then others are 15% is is 15 accounting is 25 so now according to this so again so data in a summarized form becomes more meaningful to the people in summarized form and this this is this is showing us that this has become a more meaningful to to the people now let's talk about the yes so now see here descriptions of the properties or characteristics of the data including data type field sizes allowable values and data context what we are talking about that that metadata so here example metadata for class roster so name first of all and then names type and then length and then min and then max and then description and then source so these are representing what that course name course the, the something which is course it's it should be type of alphanumeric so it's the metadata about this how much should be its length how much should be the minimum minimum character or maximum maximum numbers coming into it and course id and name what should be what what can be the different things which associated with this course and uh, source where, where it is coming from as as someone said in in their in their description as nick i think said that who wrote it so academic unit is writing these courses so academic unit becomes the metadata for that particular thing i hope now it's it's clear to everyone that section information section section information when you'll add it you'll 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 call that as integer it's an integer type its length is 1 its mean is 1 and max can be 9 section number and registrar would be kept like uh, would be adding that or source of information coming from there so again so uh, so this metadata is typically the data that is representation of the data it's basically gpa you see here gpa's metadata is what what it be it would be a decimal type of course it would be length is 3 it's it starts with 0.00 and it goes up to 4.0 student grade point average description is this and academic unit again so we know that now these become the metadata of all this information i hope that is now clear to everyone about the metadata that length and who is writing that data and who is describing that what is the description of that data how we describe that data that will become so here again so nothing nothing of that sort is typically mentioned over here that uh, that who has who has been mentioning what over here but again here we say that alphanumeric course and integer section alphanumeric semester and you know here we are making or they are trying to make our mind for going towards the databases i hope you understand for those those who are familiar with this okay disadvantages of a file system so it's a very interesting one interesting concept and the concept is that we want to know that what are the disadvantages of a file processing system okay but before that let me let me have a very quick uh, and interesting uh, conversation about it if we have not discussed any like you are not supposed to have discussed any data types till now my question is that if i ask you to create something like this to create something like this and you create create a class roster and again without making any any database because we don't know database right now we are expecting that we don't know database right now so if i ask you that i need to need you to write a program that keeps something like of so this information and then we have some other information then fees information things like that how will you make how, how will you write this type of program 
what is the option that you have if you want to write this type of program again excluding our databases we don't know what is ms access we don't know we, we don't know any database management system we don't know what is a database typically right now uh, considering that what is the option that you will use to create that type of data uh, vector or map that's good you are going into very deeper detail alex into vector or map we could write a linked list nick says try write a linked list you are very brave you will be writing linked list <laughs> nick everyone should be very happy about nick because nick is saying i'll make a linked list that's very good okay so someone says in the private that make a hash table to store the info that's very good anyone else usan says uh, usan says map or j says set or map hmm okay binary someone says binary in the private okay let me repeat my question again and i i hope people will be making sense out of it i want you to write a computer program to write a program in general that has this capability of storing information in this way as it is stored here right and there can be multiple tables multiple uh, this type of one of the class roster is this maybe there is section 1 section 3 section 5 section 7 and then they have different courses as well and things like that and i want you to write a program imitating all this information and then i can search from that information as well what you will do what is the option that you have okay jane says that i'll create a class chris says class or a script that's very good very good anyone else a class is actually a good idea and the methods can contain find oh that's very good nick thank you very much someone is privately said binary tree thank very good there is like hash table like a notepad <laughs> hash table hash map i would say class 2 jerry go is also saying class 2 but my dear friends <laughs> my dear friends put it in the excel lucas is class again my dear friends okay hash tables of structs then uh, i agree with jane maybe class and a binary tree that's good isn't this what just sql would be do for uh, derek yes you are right sql will do it for us but we don't want our sql to do it right now <laughs> we are just waiting for something <laughs> okay so 2d array lucky say save it oh josh thank you very much josh has saved my life <laughs> josh you you have come from i don't know from where i if i'm sorry if someone else has written this type of comment save it to a file <laughs> you know the concept of flat file how many of you know what is the concept of flat file <laughs> how many how many of you know what is the concept of flat file you don't okay no problem forget about files nick bam says uh nick you know we have to forget about files but to forget about files we have to remember about files <laughs> first okay so jerry says yep yep jerry uh, uh, jerry thank you yes jane says no no problem like lucas says no uh yes so uh, that's a very good habit of my Uh, like just uh, recent past student that they they will place idk at least if they don't know so i'll be expecting a response from everyone how many of you know what is a flat file without googling it without going into google how many of you know what is a flat file i'm i'm expecting a reply from everyone chris from you as well joel uh, flat uh, not not flat flat file <laughs> it's a flat file not familiar with the term nick says no problem nick something like a csv file that's good audio that's good flag f l a c jake i don't know this flag something uh, what is that flag okay i don't think i knew i knew that okay no problem try you mean afrit oh yes afrit I, i don't mean afrit i'm talk, i'm talking about flat file fully <laughs> lossless okay uh, fully oh, okay uh, fully lossless and free lossless audio compressions no i'm talking about oh no problem luca no problem and kevin that's not a problem derek uh, josh murphy says unformatted flat okay uh, uh, maybe my pronunciation is not correct so i'm writing this one this flat file please <laughs> so if someone is trying to google it they will be help oh, okay sorry oh, i i sent someone privately uh, yes so nick has done a very good job so flat file i'm talking about this flat file yes anyone okay no problem no problem please listen to this first of all very carefully please listen to this you talked about structures few people said structures few people said classes few people said something few people said something do you know that all of these are non persistent data and data storing techniques unless unless you introduce a file i hope everyone understand this i'm stopping here i'm just i'm changing my gears a bit so you know link list you talk about class you talk about anything at all you know that they are non persistent uh, non persistent ways of storing data i hope everyone understands this maybe link list maybe anything and yes once you combine all of these you'll have to write these things maybe you'll have to write a class maybe you have to write something 
but you need to combine this class this this information with what with a file with filing in c c plus whatever language you're working on you will be combining it with a file and then you can get something like this i hope everyone understands that i'll be i'll be just waiting for you know yes okay uh, some some of people nick says yes Troy says yes thank you has to be yes it has to, it has to be yes joel if i am saying that i want to store this and then i want to retrieve it so it has to be a permanent information yes you're right so mohammed says yes okay now please listen to this and after that after 2 minutes i'll go on a 10 minutes break so please listen to this a flat file please remember this a flat file in its old concept and still now as until now as well is a concept where we create a file like a csv like or like in that format the format that we are seeing right now here this one a, a file we create and it has maybe rows over there and after creation of that file we can write a query in a in any language is i says json file um is i a json files we are, i won't comment on that right now because uh, i'll discuss that about that maybe in sometimes in future okay so a flat file is a you know i'm giving a definition that i hope you will remember and that definition is also phasing out right now but again i'm just giving a definition a flat file in its old slot definition is basically a database with one table it's it's a one of the definition a database with one table is was generally called as a flat file now what we call it right now or maybe you can call it right now is a flat file is a database where you are storing your files you are storing your data in form of files maybe as as isaiah says json files maybe you are saving them in in a text form as like this one and you just you are just making a column maybe a tab and then id the tab mgt tab 2.9 again next line tab after name tab so you are getting my point so you can you if you are creating your file uh, uh, nick please bear in mind yes nick a very good point let me tell you and i'm i'm just repeating myself according to an old definition and you will find that definition somewhere that a flat file database is a database with only one table if this is this is an old definition or this is one of the definition of a flat file database now i'm talking about this a flat file is basically a file where you are just writing your code uh, writing your data like this one you are just writing your data into it and you store this save this file for example you save this file class roster.txt roster.txt and you you create a fees.txt you create a xyz.txt and you store multiple files in and then i ask you to retrieve data from them i hope nick it's making sense to you because you were asking about one table i told uh, it's like using this pretense to ah yeah 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 maybe uh, someone is asking privately yes you can yeah. okay nick you you got it so i hope everyone got the point what i'm trying to convey here that a a class uh, um, a flat file is what when you have files the data in form of files this is basically called you know this is basically called what a uh, file processing or maybe the traditional file processing i hope jerry thank you very much you you, you say that so is it making sense to everyone now i'm stopping here because i'll i'll take a quick break for for 10 minutes and then i'll come back so everyone is lucas says okay that's very good jo, jerry says makes sense anyone else are you people getting what i'm trying to say okay josh says yes makes sense that's good josh nigia says ns says that's very good that's very good i would i would like to have a yes to from everyone maybe a why will work also <laughs> because you know because i don't want you to type too much a little bit lucky says a little bit lucky i'll i'll just explain that again uh all right uh, uh, uh someone is privately asking a question they they just left for a second or something so i i'll just repeat your question don't worry you remind me after the break right i'll 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 repeat about that okay so, um yes yes lecture is recorded alex and you can always have that uh, that uh, that so again i'll i'll just repeat that don't worry luca and alex i will just repeat that just don't worry so thank you very much so we are taking a 10 minutes break my my watch is like uh, 152 so i will be back uh, right at 102 thank you very much so now we'll start so again that's not a problem someone is privately asked that they will be have to just um, um, 
in and out for the class. So no problem because we have got that recording. So you can always see that recording. Just don't worry. Right. So um, again, so you will be doing what? You will be just trying to create multiple files and those multiple files will be having, will be holding some different information. What is the problem that will occur if you, if you try to do something like that? And you can do it right now as well. And for your information, for everyone's information, your first assignment is going to be like that, that you have to do what? You have to write a program uh, like uh, in, in, in any of the language that you, you are comfortable in. And that should imitate our database. And I'll discuss about that and in your lab session, when we'll come to, the, to our lab session. All right, so what will be the disadvantage that we'll get, uh, that we'll get if, I, if we do that file processing or flat file sort of thing or a file processing something where you are making .txt or .xls file and then trying to extract information. So the first thing that it says is that you have, you know, program data, data dependence. And what is that data dependence? Let me just tell you, all program maintain metadata for each file they use. So again, there is a very good uh, diagram that will show us this. And I'll, I'll just quickly go to that diagram first. See here. So here we have that, that fi a flat file or a file system over here. And they are maintaining three files for maintaining their data. So please bear in mind that this is generally this generally shows the database type of sim, like storage type of symbol. And in good modern days, we usually represent it. The database represent is represented with it. But right now, please keep in mind that it is containing the file, you know, master file, inventory master file, background Hello. file. Hello, yes. Yeah, your uh, screen share is not uh, like oh, oh, we're not oh, able oh, to share oh. your screen. Oh, 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 thank you very much. Who is that? Ah, lucky, sir. Uh -huh, lucky. So again, I say, I, I, I usually say that we are always very lucky to have you in our class. No, sir. Like a lot of students are like commenting, uh, like oh, discussing in, the in chat group. Yeah. Oh, oh, and that that will happen every now and then, you know, because right now I was uh, just quickly let me quickly open the chat window. Oh, yes, thank sir. you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh, thank you, lucky. Right. So you see here, what I was saying is that. Uh, okay. So where I was? Yes. So disadvantages of file processing. The first disadvantage is, disadvantage is that the program data dependence, then duplication of data, then limited data sharing, lengthy development times, excessive program maintenance. All these are the problems associated with your traditional file system, traditional file processing. Right. So what are these? And we'll 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 just try to we'll just try to you know uh, explain we each one of them. So see here. If if I just quickly. Uh, open this one. So this is a this is a this is a pictorial representation. You know what it says? It says old file processing system at Pine Valley Furniture Company. So if they have they've taken a case of a furniture company, and they are talking about their file system or the database system. So you know they have these three files. They had these three files: order dep depart uh, orders department, then accounting department, payroll department. And what they are doing? They have a customer master file. They have a, they have inventory pricing file. They have a back order file. They have an inventory master file. They have an employee master file. And you know how they are connected? That payroll system, of course, would be connected to the payroll, like you know, the employee master file. And your payroll will be connected to some programs. And then we have an invoicing system. Then we have an order filling system. Order filling system, this program one, program B, or program C, both of them come and can order something. So when they will order something, so customer master profile would be activated, inventory master file would be activated, or it would be used for extracting the data from out of it. So again, so it would be used and this would be used. So again, these, the, the, this is a pictorial representation of, of a typical file, old file processing system at Pine, Pine Valley Furniture. Now, what are the problems that they say is that I'll, I'll discuss each one of them. Program data dependence, duplication of data, limited data sharing, lengthy development. So first of all, program data dependence. All programs maintain metadata for each file they use. So again, you know that this, this orders department, they will have to just keep everything about the customer and it will have to keep everything, every metadata about this file or about this ordering system. This accounting department will have to, because it is also keeping this master customer file. So this will also keeping the, you know, the information of uh, the metadata. You remember what was metadata? Who is entering the information? Who is doing what? So, you know, order department is also maintaining the customer file and the accounting department is also maintaining the customer file. Do you see a very big problem over here that that every file or every department needs to keep the information or needs to keep the metadata about the file. Why? Because the customer is also involved here. 
in accounting department because invoicing will be done to the customer and customer is also involved here where their order filling system is there so of course uh, customer will be involved here so all the metadata about this customer will be replicated here and here everyone and everyone can make sense out of it so program data dependence it says that you have to just keep in mind that you are basically trying to trying to uh, maintain maintain the metadata in everywhere where you are storing these files so this file should have this file should have that okay and then a duplication of data different systems programs have separate copies of the same data and that that is also the same this master customer file will be here and as well as here the duplication of data is also here alongside the alongside the uh, the the uh, the you know the metadata we are talking about alongside metadata we have this customer file and this repetition of data as well and then we have limited data sharing you know data sharing means what so again if something you want to change here for the customer if something is changed customer has changed their phone number customer has changed something so you know that now that change has to be bring into the information of this accounting department and maybe sometimes this customer record is also involved in somewhere else so you need to update that as well so sharing is very 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 limited here why because if you are if you are doing something over here if you are updating something here you need to manually or you need you need a good amount of effort to update it at every part of that why because you need to keep that uh, data uh, synchronous and you you need to have always the updated information of everything so again what is happening here is that duplication of data is limited data sharing is no centralized control of data so data is not centralized control anywhere so customer file is being created here being created here if something is changed you need to change it over here as well and you need to change it over here as well so you know that is limited uh, data sharing also lengthy development times you know what what will happen you have to write this code for this file and this file all over again you know even though you have got something this file that has that has basically the same same type of information but you need to write this this code over and over again so your your lengthy your programmers must design their own file formats and you have to write those fi file formats from scratch every time so they say that lengthy development times excessive program maintenance 80% of information systems budget so again if you are doing something like that you will have to maintain all these things separately again keeping very secret this customer master data and you know just recently there were some security breaches data bre uh, and might might uh, any one of you does does anyone did anyone experience that td scam that is going on these days these days amazon amazon payments going from td account if someone has experienced out of you maybe out of 72 jane jane is surprised has has anyone experienced not you jerry that's good but i i was the victim for it and i i was a victim you know two months back maybe i said i have no i have no amazon account and why amazon has taken this you know maybe 200 dollars from my account so i just you know complained td and they said that this is a scam something going on so this they just changed my access card and everything and now i'm very good and and the payment is is back in my account as well so for your information so again yes so there were lots of people and i heard about like uh, from uh, many of friends lana someone get into account and spend yes yes something like that mike something like that has has been happening with some some uh, some uh, some uh, accounts so maybe td or maybe some others so there was so again customer file <laughs> so design you'll have to check your account td account, and you know occasionally check it because i was also just checking it randomly my my statement as i found out amazon payment i, I have not purchased anything from amazon. i i don't i did not have even my amazon account at that time so i said what is going on so then i i checked it with them and i found out that this was a scam or something like so again you know what has happened that this this cost is very much that you have to just secure or keep in mind that you have to just secure this information in your invoicing as well you have to keep that in its, in your orders as well and things like that so you know there are lots of issues with that so your 80% of information system budget will be going on your maintenance so you know so these are the problems that you might face so problems with data dependency as we said that this uh, data dependence each application program must maintain their own data each application program needs to include code for the metadata of each file each application program must have its own processing routine for reading inserting updating and deleting data lack of coordination and control uh, central control and non standard file formats you, you know what is happening here for order filing system you will be writing new code for invoicing system you will be writing new code for payroll you will be writing new code why because you have to just maintain all those different files and you have to just maintain all those files so now so these are the problems so problems is data redundancy one of the one of the concept that we discussed the redundancy duplication of data you know what is that called it's called data redundancy 
waste of space to have duplicate data without any reason you are keeping customer at two parts you know customers information the customers private information sometimes and sometimes customers like you know the purchasing and all those information you are trying to just store that in in, in different places so that that creates a that creates a problem causes more maintenance headaches and uh, the biggest problem data changes in one file could cause inconsistency compromises in data integrity so this is called data integrity or integrity problem that change in one file will not be shown in the other file please bear in mind that we are talking about a system where there are different files you know imitating the database but they are not database they are not related some some way or other but they are different files and they have their own information so now the biggest problem will be the data change in one file could cause inconsistency in the other i hope because i have talked a lot so i'll just stop here and i'll just ask every one of you they are with me or not so if you are with me uh, are we good to go yes or no yes okay nick nick says thank you nick thank you thank you oh that's good that's good that's very good okay alex says that makes sense all right right no problem no problem if 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 someone is leaving no problem it's not a problem because you have uh, you have your recordings with you and and you know uh, because we we have few students maybe out of canada right now as well so i'll try to just uh, share this recording as early as the, the link for this recording as early as possible so that you also get a chance to have a look at it all right so uh, now all these problems the biggest problem the big the data changes one file could cause inconsistency compromise in data integrity now the solution comes and now the real part of our 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 topic comes today here central repository of shared data so we have database approach we have a solution we try to do database approach filing approach file approach was that something that we have discussed already now we are talking about the database approach is a central repository of shared data data is managed by a controlling agent stored in a standardized convenient form and it requires what a dbms as lucky said dbms database management system you remember in the in the very beginning of our topic i asked a question about database and i told you that you need to keep uh, in mind the difference between a database and a database management system rather also here we are talking about that if you want to do all these things central repository and then uh, data managing via control agent and storing in a standardized standardized con convenient form you need to have a database approach and you need to have a database management system any popular database management systems name anyone i'll just go to the next slide first any popular names of database management systems oracle oh joel so you have you have called you like you have named the maybe the the best in the market first or maybe mysql and it says and yes and if you have any experience in mysql mysql mongo 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 db it's phil mongo db yes <laughs> oh and it's no problem on oh, it's no problem because you know after this class after this sec this this course you will be very good in all those databases other than these mongo db and things like that which are no sequel i'll tell you what is that mongo system <laughs> all right <laughs> all right so there are so many yes there are so many yes and chris says oracle chris uh, you missed out joel's comment because joel was the first to tell about tell us about oracle so oracle is yes one of the um, greatest and uh, you know in the market anyhow so database management system so what is database management system then a software system that is used to create maintain and provide controlled access to user databases so that's a very interesting concept you know all those problems that were coming over there not problems all those things that were coming here order filing system invoicing payroll system what we are trying to do is we have created or we have used a dbms in between these and we have created a central database that contains employee order inventory pricing and customer data and we have like we have combined or we have connected it with a dbms and we have connected three application or three systems with it order filing system invoicing system payroll system now the life looks looks very good now okay so now we have we don't have to maintain these things separately rather we are just combining all these things into a big box a big big cylinder and then what we are doing is central database we are calling it and we are calling contains employee information order information inventory information pricing and customer data so i have to use this database what should i use use a dbms a database management system now what is that database management system like how it will help me out it will help me in a way that i can connect any application with it and this will be good 
good to go with that application. I'll connect order filing system. This will provide information to order filing system. I'll connect invoicing system. Invoicing system. It will provide invoicing information. I'll connect the payroll system, and it will provide everything. Why? Because this central database has all those, you know, uh, nitty gritty or all those all those components that I need to implement our our database. So DBMS is what DBMS is a good uh, a big a big giant something which is doing what. it is it manages data resources like an operating system manages hardware resources so you know that operating systems lies in between your and your hardware you are here and your hardware is here same like dbms is it act like an operating system that will be in between you in between you this is you and your database so database management system dbms and yes you have people have named already a few of them and we have uh, we have a lots of uh, uh, lots of other database dbm dbms and we'll uh so basically we'll be, we'll be we'll be able to just have uh, we'll have multiple database management systems and we can have we can have those those in 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 our in our things so anyhow so dbms so the concept that comes over here is as a dbms and what is a dbms now these are very interesting and important concepts and looks like i i'll have to just discuss few things in our lab session as well so please bear in mind i'm announcing something right now that our lab session will be important now because of two reasons some something i will discuss from these slides as well and then we have to discuss assignment one and went to discuss lots of lots of things regarding that lucid chart of vizi as well so please bear in mind that uh, we'll have a very important lab session at least for this week so elements of the database approach data models so first of all we have few things or few elements that that will be used to to you know implement the da database approach first of all we have data models and i'll just quickly go through it and we'll we'll we'll, we'll practically try to look the, look at them maybe today or maybe in, in our lab session graphical diagram capturing nature and relationships of data so first of all what we try to do is that we graphically try to show the relationship and the nature of information between them this is the first one the graphical diagram capturing nature and relationship of data so it would be the first one enterprise data model high level entities and relationships for the organization so uh, we have uh, first of all graphical diagram and then we have enterprise data modeling that will show high level entities and relationships i'll discuss about entities and relationship because there is uh, these are by themselves concept that are coming but again i'll i'll just quickly so it will just show the high high level relationship between these different things project data model more detailed view matching data structure in database or data warehouse so basically project data model there is there is a high level something and then there is a detailed view that will be called project data model and the 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 first one is called enterprise data model and we'll see both of their examples shortly so one of the thing that came came here entities it's very interesting what are entities noun form describing a person place object event or concept so we will be just trying to name something as i said employee can be a one entity student can be another entity a place you know as a as a class class a123 can be a one entity so entity is what a noun it would be a name it describe which will describe a person place object event or a concept sometimes it may be it may be representing a concept so again entities are something that will have that that will be used to represent different components of our database number one entities and it's a this word is a very important one and again this word will never leave you again from now onward because entities will come every now and then and we have already seen these entities before that composed of attributes and attributes are very easy like uh, uh something that defines us, something that gives more features more information about the entities is basically attributes so entities will have attributes related to them i hope everyone is with me till now then relationships entities have relationship between them and they have they are they are just you know combined together to some relationship and what are those relationship there are some some uh, some given examples here usually one to many sometimes one to many i will discuss what is what does that mean one to many uh, okay yes <laughs> nick you remember this from uh, your semester uh, so many to i guess we discussed that you you're right we also discussed that somewhere uh, yes erd is also entity relationship diagrams so one to many or many to many this can be m colon n but could also be one to one that can be a one to one something and they, as their names are self descript uh, like you know self descriptive that when you are saying that something is one to many it means that uh, one thing can have multiple things and it is related in one to many relationship and then many to many relationship and then uh, one to one relationship relational databases 
the database technology involving tables relations representing entities and primary foreign keys representing the relationship this is very important and i would like to all of you to just have a very much you know important uh, like uh, to remember this term as well like uh, with with all importance relational database it basically a database technology involves you know you have you you have used this uh, dbms word and you all all of you might know that there is called, there is something called rdbms relational database management system or like system so basically it's what it's basically a relational database is what it's a database technology that involves tables and relations representing entities and primary foreign keys representing relationships i hope you have a slight idea of primary and foreign keys can anyone just quickly tell me again uh, you are not supposed to answer this but again anyone who has a prior experience if they can tell us about what is a primary or a foreign key primary key is what anyone because we are going to do that and we'll we'll do that in lab as well but right now i'm just asking some someone without googling if someone can answer primary key uh, the data object unique identifier that's good joel primary key is unique for every data lucky you are right so it's unique for so again and what is the foreign key then so two answers for primary key two answers for foreign key i would be needing yes anyone yes i'm waiting for the answer from someone maybe foreign key anyone without google primary key is a unique field and foreign key is one that is another table that depends on that primary key jerry thank you very much <laughs> yes you are <laughs> you are you are right jerry it's a, it's a, not something lava. yeah yes you are right primary key in another table okay home says that primary key reference to a primary key in a table all right so we'll discuss that in very much detail but right now for those un like not familiar i'll just uh, give a quick definition primary key which uniquely identifies a record in in a particular table for example if i start collecting your data into a table so you all have one unique uh, maybe you 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 all have one unique identity and i'll make it a primary key that will only be for you and no other one will have that and may, mostly you have that uh, you know maybe id in in your in our environment or something student number yes lucky thank you so uh, and and when we talk about the foreign key the foreign key is as someone said that when this key or this key will go to some other table and there you will be recognized so that will be called as a foreign key for a particular second table and we'll see that everything just don't worry but you have to remember from this slide is that a relational database is something that involves tables or relations that represent entities and primary foreign keys and they represent their relationship so we'll discuss that in deeper detail all right so quickly uh, we'll we'll have just look at uh, some of the sorry some of the comparison of enterprise and project level data models so again we we said that high level uh, high level data models are the are, are the enterprise level and then project level so we'll discuss about them customer ordered product first of all my question customer order product what three the, these three are called anyone quick answer i quick answer i need entities that's very good lucky thank you very much lucky is very active today so so they are called entities please bear in mind everyone who is there and who is just trying to make yes try you are right these are entities so customer is one entity order is one entity and product is one entity and you remember what we discussed that entities are like they get features or they get their uh, their you know their properties from what the attributes if you remember they are called attributes that is, and we'll discuss that so again enterprise level diagram which shows customer order and product so these three are the entities and they are connected to to each other and i'll tell you a very slight idea right now and we'll discuss in, in our lab as well customer places order you know customer places order and orders are basically uh, are contained or order contains what the product every order will have some products in it so these three are related to each other how they are related customer places order order contains product and if you go in the reverse direction product is contained in order and order is placed by customer so far so good now first of all i'm not going into the, the deeper detail i'll come back to this detail but first of all come to this segment of a project level data model now we have come to the project level data model down deep a bit more detailed customer customer has what customer id and customer name so now these are what anyone in the chat window other than troy and lucky so what are these called customer id and customer name anyone quickly attributes thank you josh thank you very much not primary key alex these are the attributes representing customer <laughs> yes thank you uh, wang this is the 
this is these are attributes so customer will have customer id customer will have customer name and they place order order will have an id order will have a customer id order will have a order date order uh, order date okay then order is is basically order contains order line there will be a order line like there will be different orders or order line something this order line will have they will have what the products inside it and a product will have product id and standard price order line will have quantity how much quantity you are asking for or something like that so so order is basically order contains an order line which is which has products in it right everyone so this is a this is a project so now quickly this what what this diagram means what this what what these these typical symbol means and i hope have you if you have used this visio or you have used that lucid chart you most of you know so now what is saying it's basically showing one customer can have many orders one to many relationship it is trying to show i hope everyone understand and order and product because multiple orders can have multiple products in them so a product has a many to many relationship with the product is that right order has many to many relationship with the product if you talk about customer again in a deta detailed form customer has many orders customer can place many orders and as you see that customer id here is what yes now other than those four who have already answered so i need all rest of customer id here is yes it is it is ns it is uh, ns it is saying uh, it's uh, like behaving as a primary key you are right and then if you talk about that customer places an order so order is basically what that it has order id customer id and order details what is the foreign foreign key over here what is the foreign key over here customer id customer id yes customer id twice yes customer ID. yes so we'll see that and we, yes that is what that that this customer id will be helpful of finding out about the customer phil you got the point i hope you 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 are surprised so you you mean you have you are starting to get the point good so then we have order will order can have multiple order lines order can contain multiple order lines multiple quantities coming from different places so the order lines will be multiple but every one has a single product single product means one product can be in multiple order lines and we'll again please don't worry about it i'll discuss that uh, uh, in a very deeper detail when it time will come but right now are you getting this concept everyone i'm just placing a dashed so every everyone is with me please uh, please tell me yes good good oh <laughs> jang i cannot understand that <laughs> so you have tried to get yes no problem jang i know that you 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 need to change your keyboard also all right oh phil <laughs> can can anyone tell me what is what does what has phil written it here <laughs> can anyone tell me what is that <laughs> lucky can tell me <laughs> lucky are you able uh, are you able to say me what what is phil writing here <laughs> oh lucky does not know so lucky oh okay okay so phil knows that uh, he he knows some from somewhere the urdu and hindi part so he has written down this is g sir and this is yes sir that means <laughs> So anyhow, so uh, that's good, Phil. So I know that means you have you have good, some Indian friends with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so so this is this one is that. So I hope uh, uh, okay. So I hope that everyone understands this. So now come to this one a, a a bit more. So that that is that is telling us that one to many relationship. One customer may place many orders, but each order is placed by a single customer. So orders can be many, but every order can have a single customer. Please bear in mind. and it sometimes becomes confusing because sometimes students come and they say that so there are multiple customers so why not it is also one to many why not it is many so you know you remember one customer can place many orders but each order is placed by only a single a single customer so order has a many to one or a one to many if if i go from that side it will be many to one and if i go from that side from from downward or like up to downward so that will share, show that it's a one to many so it has one to many relationship with this so again order is placed by uh, like uh, this 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 order is placed by they can be multiple so one to many relationship i hope everyone understands that and then this one one order has many order lines each order line is associated with a single product so every order line will be connected with a single but every order can have multiple order lines so you know this order has one to many relationship with this order line i hope everyone is getting this see here and one another example one product can be in many order lines each order line refers to a single product so one product can be in many order lines you know every 
every product can to a many order lines many 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 order lines can be there which have which have the same product but order lines all order lines can be connected to a single product only i hope that is making sense to everyone that is also called one to many relationship between these these all these okay let's talk about something interesting many orders will have many products in them so therefore one order involves many products and one products in involved in many orders so many to many relationship so this order if we if we create any relationship between these two that would be a many to many relationship why therefore one order involves many products one order will will, will have many products in it and one products involve many orders and many orders can have that single product so basically what we are saying is that we have this many to many relationship if we are if we are drawing any relationship between these two that will become a many to many relationship and then comes this another uh, example enterprise model for something again why it is enterprise anyone why we are calling it enterprise model because it does not have that minute details or attribute yes no attributes direct thank you very much no attributes so customer places many orders many orders are contained in many inventory and many inventory like one inventory can have as inventory pricing history and then we have back order orders can have multiple back orders back orders can have one inventory item into it and then employee has price change of etc so this is one enterprise model that does not contain the mod, uh, the, uh, the the uh, deeper details now advantages of database approach what are the advantages and then we'll discuss the disadvantages also in the end so what are the advantages program data independence plan data redundancy improved data consistency improved data sharing increased application development productivity enforcement of standards improve data quality improve data accessibility and responsiveness reduce program maintenance improve decision support now i'll just quickly go back to this one and now i'll try to ask you that how how do do you find this thing so see, see here do you see something here and we have we already know that what database is helping us out so customer id once saved here it won't be needed to be saved here rather here it will be doing what we'll be just using this customer id to in to 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 invoke that customer or to get all that information so again this all customer information does not need to be saved here in order order table rather there will be just customer id and by this customer id i can go to this table and find all the customer information do you remember uh, do you do can, can you can you just guess what is going on here that we are just making one customer table making a I'm making a primary key over here and by using this primary key as a foreign key in other tables can i get all the information of customer in this table not that table rather if i want to have that information i'll just go to that table and i'll just extract that information from the customer table i hope that making sense to everyone i hope everyone is just trying to understand what what i'm okay devin thank you now see here so program data independence so it will it will be independent and data will be independent plan data redundancy we can have plan data redundancy what does that mean you know a little redundancy is coming here you know customer id is also saved here or also coming here but you know only customer id is coming here so it's a you can call it a planned redundancy we know that customer id if it will be here we can use this customer id to go to this table and we'll get all the information for some particular area so we don't need to store all those customer information into this table rather we'll be just only storing Uh, only storing that information which will be going to the to our database part so that is these are the advantages information enforcement of standards improved increased application development productivity improved data quality improved data accessibility responsiveness reduced program maintenance improved decision support so now you know uh, yes lucky you are right like calling a function that function have their data uh, like their their body being defined somewhere else and you do what you just call a function and that function's body is basically either embedded or it comes to your Uh, comes to help you out and it just it does it, it just does what you want it to do so anyhow so this is basically what increased data development and improves standard so these are all the advantages of our database approach now cost and risk of the database now everything comes with their risks and and uh, risks also always there it's not like uh, there is no ideal world here and uh, there will be problems with the database as well so cost and risk new specialized personnel so you know you need to have people who understand database if you are if you are implementing database in a company or an organization uh, so not everyone is you know everyone knows what how to how to interact with the database so maybe they are used to of doing that traditional file system and they say that we are they, the people will be reluctant in 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 just 
adapting or learning the new things and they'll say that i we don't want to learn anything about that particular data. so again you need to have specialized personnel those so, so for the development as well and for, and for the usage as well sometimes you will be needing those those good people and then installation and management cost and complexity so of course when you will be using the database and most of you know that uh, there are licensing problems come and then database uh, installation is is in itself is is a is a good decision to make and with things like cloud and all those things happening out right now around the corner we have got a lots of options we have that so we have that cost that for conversion cost so you have a legacy system you know legacy systems are those which are uh, which are being used from the previous version or previous things so you need to convert yes old systems joel thank you very much so those legacy systems need to convert the conversion cost come need to explicit backup recovery and for again you need to have a so in file system you are saying that there is a problem that you need to keep record in, in multiple files but one good thing about that was that if you have if you lose lose one file so you still have that other file and it has customer information but that is a very small uh, advantage is if you compare to all those things organizational conflict what does that organizational conflict means again different departments have different needs so you need to just keep in mind that you have to design a database in a way that different departments or different organizational units do not conflict with each other and your database design should be effective enough so that every every you know uh, every department is basically uh, easily just uh, handling it out or easily just having it accepting that right the components of database environment so this is a very interesting one so we have certain components and we'll discuss all those components in 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 deep, deeper detail in, in the coming slides so we uh, just quickly look at it database and database administrators so there are people uh, there is a database and there is a data and database administrator so there is a data and database administrator we just we'll discuss what is that database administrator system developers end users and then we have a user interface they are all connected to this user interface this user interface is connected to application programs and those application programs are connected to this dbms dbms database management system user interface is also directly connected to dbms sometimes you will need to go to application program and go to dbms sometimes you will need to go to directly dbms sometimes you need to go to a repository something which is which will discuss what is that sometimes you'll have to do data modeling and design tools which are there database this is very important uh, can anyone tell me what is data modeling and design tools we are talking about we have been we have been discussing this a lot during our lecture today so if you say data modeling and design tools what we are talking about uh, yes we are we are talking about those those tools jerry that provide us this facility of modeling and we are talking about lucid chart and visio and all things like things like that right so again so we have that that type of thing so we have these components of a database environment let let's quickly just uh, review few of them and then we'll we, we might end at uh, uh, our time so that we we have that discussion and we get again fresh so components of database environment data modeling and design tools it's the automated tools used to design databases and application programs so those tools that are used for uh, for uh, for designing Uh, for designing the database and application program so again you need tools for that if you are developing a program you need some program application programs or you are you need some design, tools to design and design tools again for designing these uh, has what 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 you are, what you just saw uh, the entity relationship diagram or the diagram representing the database original working then we have repository so what is that centralized storehouse of metadata so repository is basically called what centralized storehouse of metadata so once you define that metadata who is controlling what who is doing what who is adding the what so that will also be centralized storehouse and you will have that storehouse with you dbms database management system software for managing the database so we have everything connected to this dbms again when we or other they are all connected to this so we have this database management system software for managing the database database storehouse of the data as someone also gave this definition from out of you application programs software using the data so the softwares that are that are just accessing that data or extracting or inserting that data into it user interface we have text graphical displays menus etc for user so user will only be provided with with the with the, the the graphical tools that they will use to extract information out of the database so user interface is that database administrator or data is what personnel personnel responsible for maintaining the database so again those two, those people who are maintaining the database so that is also that also adds to your cost that you need people to 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 monitor your database to to keep track of what is going on to to keep track of all the problems that are happening if 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 something is happening into your database system developers like you people maybe personnel responsible for designing databases and software so those people who will be writing all those things 
the other system developers. End users, people use the application in databases. So all those uh, not like new way users or something, they, they, they just come and they just have to use that database and they will have those applications that will be extracting data from it. One good example is, you know, websites. So websites provide you a very easy way of accessing just your database. If I talk about a Facebook, and if you if you say someone that you have to go in the database and find out your tweet, uh, your your maybe uh, your posts out of it, your pictures out of it, so you know what life will will become for them. But you know the user interface, the end user have been given a very easy interface by the Facebook, where users just go and they just log into their account and they can extract whatever information they want for for themselves. So that's that's one good thing about the 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 user interface. So inter user interfaces are also there. And now enterprise data model. So first step in the database development process is the enterprise data model. You remember the high level diagram that will specify everything. That specify scope and general content, overall picture of organization data, high level of abstraction, entity relationship diagram, you know, ERD. You'll see that and we'll, we'll shortly start designing them. ERDs are there, so entity relationship diagrams. Descriptions of entity types, entity types description, relationship between entities and business rules. So whatever, so here in a big picture, in an overall picture, in a high level picture, you are trying to define the enterprise data model and that enterprise data model is basically, uh, it comprises of all those things. So then we have uh, we have uh, example function, uh, business function to data entity matrix. So we have, we'll, we'll discuss that. So it's basically saying that what is included in what? So basically in business planning, customer product, and then equipment and employee are involved and product development, product, raw material and work center, and equipment is involved, of course, and then order fulfillment. If you can see that we have customer, the order fulfillment is is comprising of everything we have. It has it has customer also, it has product also, it has raw material also. So you need to just keep in mind that in a high at a high level, who will be involved in what? If you talk about invoices, you know invoices. What is involved? Invoices, order fulfillment, order shipment, and then sales summarization, and then finance and accounting. You know all these are concerned with the invoice. So you'll be making something like this a diagram. That will tell you the overall picture of the of the uh, of the. So it is called business function to data entry matrix. So this is you will be just making how my, how how people will be involved in that our main diagram. So last slide for today. A good good news for everyone. The, this will be last slide for today, and we are exactly to the end, like to the mid of our slide. So please bear in mind again. I'm just reminding you, announcing again, and I'll put that announcement as well that we'll be having some discussion. So I'll just try to be a very be specific in that next section, uh, in lab section, and then we'll talk about the lab and the assignment one and all those things. So again, so two approaches to database and uh, development and its development. So SDLC, I hope everyone knows what is SDLC, that boring SDLC. So do you know what about, uh, about SDLC, everyone? I need some chat uh, answers and it says yes. So people know about that, okay. So, you know, some people say that SDLC has died already, but again, we have that SDLC in mind and we are just keeping that. So system development life cycle, SDLC is basically what? Detailed, well-planned development process. And we say that this is a detailed development, well-planned process, which has all their uh, like steps well-defined, defined, time-consuming, but comprehensive. It is time-consuming, consuming, but it's comprehensive and long development cycle. So it has a long development cycle. Then we have prototyping, you know, that you would have studied that all those in your maybe software engineering course or something. Rapid application development, RAD, and cursory attempt to conceptual data modeling, define database during development of 